All right, guys, so for this part of the lesson, we're going to be analyzing the colors that Picasso used in a repetitive manner, meaning he repeated them through many paintings, in his Cubist-style portraits of these amazing women. So what you want to have on hand is your color wheel. Your color wheel is so important. It helps you to identify colors. It helps you to understand how to mix them, how they interact with each other. So pull this out because it's going to be a useful resource to you. Um, you also are going to want to have your chart, your watercolors, some brushes, some water, uh, maybe some scrap paper to test your colors on, and um, a palette to mix your colors in. So many of you have watercolor palettes uh, from the school. Most of them have white lids. Mine happen to have a clear lid, and because my desk is so dark, if I were to mix the colors on here, I'd have trouble seeing exactly what the actual hue was. Um, so I like to mix mine in a palette. Um, this is just a little porcelain dish. Um, you could use a plate with permission at your house. If you don't have um, a white lid, if you have a clear lid like I do, you can also test the colors on scrap paper um, to help you identify whether you've mixed the color correctly or not before you put it onto your chart. So make sure you've got your water, some brushes, watercolors, a palette, your chart, and of course your color wheel. So prior to this lesson, I asked you to look through these paintings and list colors that you saw and to be specific when identifying the color. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at some of Picasso's famous portraits and we're gonna start there by looking for the colors that pop out at us and then putting them into our chart to help us remember what colors he used on a regular basis. So I'm gonna start with the uh, painting called um, Portrait of Marie Therese Walter and I'll put that up on the screen for you so you can reference it. You can also look at it in your Google slide presentation once I do that so that you can see what I'm looking at and where I'm getting these colors that I'm using. So I'm gonna set my color wheel aside for a second and I'm going to start with one of the colors that really pops out to me in this painting and that is the very lemony bright yellow that I'm seeing. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate my paints Remember that to activate your paint, you're literally, literally just putting a drop of water into each of the colors you're using. I don't know that I'm gonna use black, but I'm gonna activate it anyway. Same with brown. Okay, so for this first one, because it's this very bright lemony yellow, um, I'm actually not going to mix anything because it's a primary color and I've got it in my paint palette. So I'm just gonna use it as is. And I'm going to go ahead and load my brush with paint. That just means I'm filling the bristles of the brush with the paint. Now remember, uh, the more water you have on your brush and mixed with the paint, the more translucent or lighter the color will be the less water you have, the more uh, saturated or vibrant the color will be. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just start with uh, this one here. So what I'm gonna do, and I may switch brushes here in a second for these smaller details, is I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this in kind of a lemony yellow color. And I'm probably gonna switch my brush really soon. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and let that dry. Rinse my brushes so that they're nice and clean. And I'm gonna go back to that painting and see what other colors I can identify. Now, what I noticed as I looked through the Google slide presentation I made for you and I looked carefully and very closely at these paintings is that he did use some colors very consistently. So we're seeing yellow and pretty much every single one of these paintings. 
So another color I noticed that he used in almost every single one of these paintings is blue. So again, depending on your paint palette and the color we're trying to achieve, you may want to adjust it. Uh, but for this, I'm going to use that primary blue that's already been provided in my paint palette. And I'm not going to mix this because remember, this is a primary color. Um, so I can't actually make it by mixing anything. So I'm going to go ahead and use blue for my next one. Now, when I go to paint, remember that I don't want to paint any of the squares that are touching the one I just painted. Stop and ask yourself why that is. If you said it's because your colors would run together, you're absolutely right. So what you want to do is pick another spot on your chart where the colors or the sides would not be touching. So you could do something that's diagonal. That would probably be okay. But just to be safe, I'm going to go over here and I think I'm going to do one of these here. So I think I'm going to come up here and I think I'm going to paint this square in right up here. And if your blue in your palette is a little bit different than my blue, that's okay. They, they are different depending on uh, the manufacturers and even just um, from time to time you get different blues from Crayola, which is what I'm using right now is um, just a Crayola paint palette. So this color is very vibrant because I have not mixed a lot of water into it my brush was damp but it was not dripping with water if it starts to look a little bit like this that means you probably need a little bit more water or at least more paint on your brush remember these are watercolors so you need to use water with them Okay, I'm going to wash my brushes out and I'm going to look for the next color that I'm going to use on my chart. And again, I'm going to look through all of the paintings and then I'm going to try and identify another color that I see used consistently. Okay, so the next color I noticed in each of the paintings was red, but um, what I noticed about the red was that it didn't really look like the red that I had in my paint palette. And the red changed a bit from painting to painting. So there's more of like a raspberry color red, more of a red orange, kind of more of a brick red in some of them, but red was used consistently. So what I decided to do was take this red from my palette and I didn't have much water on my brush. so. The way I got most of the water out is I just took the brush and pushed it alongside my water container to get as much of the water out as possible. And then I loaded my brush with red paint and put it in my palette, rinsed it out of course, got as much water as I could out of it. I loaded um, a little bit of orange in there and I put it in here to mix them together so that the color is a little bit more red orange. Um, than just kind of a pinky red. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use that color to paint in um, another feature on the chart. So again, as I'm looking around here, I'm thinking about, well, I just painted this, so I don't wanna paint here or here, because it might bleed. I can see that this is almost dry, but I do have a spot here, as I'm looking at it, that's still a little wet. So I'm gonna be very careful about this. I wouldn't wanna paint anything that's directly beside it. So that leaves me with some diagonal choices. Um, so I think that I'm actually going to go, where am I gonna paint next? I think I'm going to go ahead and paint this eye. 
Well, I'm not gonna paint the eye, I'm gonna paint the area around it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work very carefully at the corner because if that yellow is wet and I have wet paint on my brush, there's a chance they could bleed together. Um, so I'm gonna work very carefully when I get to there. you have a smaller brush, as you get to areas that are smaller, you should definitely think about switching your brushes, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna load this up with some of that color I mixed up. So if you want your colors to stay pretty saturated or pretty vibrant when you're mixing them, remember that the way you do that is by not having so much water in your brush because the more water you have in your brush, the lighter the values will be or the colors will be when you place them on the paper. Remember to pause, rewind, and take your time in this video. Um, a lot of this will be sped up Remember that I am actually, in reality, painting slower. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that one dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and identify another color that I see being consistently used by Picasso. And let me take a look make a decision, and then we'll mix that color up. So the next color we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do more of a lighter green, so more of a lime green or a yellow green. So remember that as we're talking about mixing these colors, to use your color wheel to help you remember how to do that. So I'm gonna be mixing up a color that's more in this family. It's gonna be a little bit darker than this, but that tells me, okay, if I want a lighter green, then I need to take green and add some yellow into it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to make sure my brushes are clean. And remember, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to try and do this on camera without spilling any water on my painting. I'm going to take my brush. You can see that water droplet about to drop off there. I'm going to gently, well that tells me that's not clean, so I'm going to do a figure eight in the bottom. I'm going to gently bring this along the side to get as much water out as possible. So my brush is still going to be wet, but it will have a lot less water in it. And that's because I want my colors to be fairly saturated. Okay, so keep, I keep saying that word saturated. I want them to be vibrant. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with yellow. I'm going to start with the weaker color. If you think way back to color theory, I talked a lot about this with um, watercolors. Um, it's a good idea to start with your weaker color and then add your stronger color to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a fair amount of yellow on here and add it in. And again, you can do this in the top of your paint palette. Um, I told you why I'm not doing that, just because I can't see the colors very clearly with a clear lid. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush out, do that same process. And I'm gonna start very slowly um, with my green. And I'm actually gonna use a little brush so I can always have more green if I need to. I'm gonna mix that up. And I could probably do a little bit more green depending on which painting you're looking at. Um, I'm looking at the green hair in one of these. I'll put that up on the screen for you. I'm going to add just a touch more green to that. Closer. So maybe a little bit more. Okay, so now I've just got to decide where I'm going to paint the screen. So this looks pretty much dry. This one is drying, so I'm definitely not going to go here. Um, 
guess let's go ahead and do the nose up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this in. I'm gonna start with these smaller areas or details first. And I'm actually gonna turn my book. And the reason I'm turning my book is so that I don't rest my hand by accident on um, a painting that's wet. So I turn my book a lot when I'm working. Any painting or drawing I'm working on, I often turn it. Because it really doesn't matter if your painting's upside down when you're working on it if you're just painting in an area. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back around. And I think the next color we'll do is going to be violet. So when I'm looking through Picasso's paintings, I see a really dark violet. Um, I also see more of a lavender. So depending on which painting you're looking at, you're gonna see a variety of different purples. So we'll go ahead and start with one and we may end up mixing up more than one purple as we work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to try out the purple or violet that came in my palette. And I'm gonna put that on here to kind of get a feel for what that looks like. Um, that is pretty light and it has um, a little bit more red in it. I see it in one of the paintings maybe, so we'll go ahead and use this for one of it and then we'll probably mix up another purple or violet at some point, um, just so we have the darker one too maybe. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. So now I just have to decide where I'm gonna put it. Remember this is completely wet, so I don't wanna paint directly beside it, so those two spots are out. It's kind of like playing a game here. Um, Yellow should be pretty much dry at this point. This looks like it's dry, but this would be an area where you want to be careful. And this should be dry. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to paint, I think I'll paint this in, okay? So. Again, I'm gonna turn my book. Um, I'm just looking for an angle where I am not going to put my hand on top of any of my wet. So we've got a couple of our features painted in here using some of the colors we're seeing in these paintings by Picasso. And I'm going to identify an, another color that I've either seen used consistently or at least I can identify in one to two of the paintings. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mix up a darker purple because uh, I do see very dark purple being used in a number of these paintings. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the purple I already have here and I'm just gonna add to that. Now, if you had a really dark purple, um, you may want to do the opposite and lighten your purple up by adding water to it to get a lighter one or making a red violet by adding a little bit of red to yours. This is more on a red violet side. 
in my palette. Um, but if you had a purple that was pretty bright and also on the light side, then you can work with me and do this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually in an effort to make this darker, I'm going to add some brown. Just a small amount at first. And we'll see which what direction that takes me. That actually took me to red violet because there's a lot of red in both the brown and the purple that's in my palette. So let's go ahead and add a teensy weensy bit of black. Instead, and that hopefully will cool this down a little bit. But I'm going to work with a very tiny amount. So this is why it's important to understand color theory so that you're able, yeah, that was a much better choice, um, to make colors the way you want them to be. And whether that you're trying to recreate a color you see in somebody else's painting or you have a color in your head that you want to use but it's not in your paint palette, understanding color theory is going to be better very beneficial to you for that reason. I'm going to add a little bit more black to this because each time I add um, some of the purple or violet, it warms it back up a little bit. work very carefully with your black because a little bit of black goes a long way. I'm going to go ahead and test out what that looks like on a scrap paper before I use it. So it's um, more of this color so it is different than the one here. Um, I may work a little bit longer on getting it exactly where I want it feels a bit watery at the moment. Ah, so I'm much more satisfied with this now. So I added a little bit of blue, and what you probably noticed is that while I sped this up for you, it actually took me a couple of minutes to get myself to the purple I wanted. So you can see me trying different um, iterations of the color, meaning just variations as I continued to mix until I got to the point where I was satisfied. So what I did, again, was I took my purple, tried brown, it was too warm, so to cool it down I added my black, um, continued to mix, and then I added a touch of blue to it to get to where I am here. And I'm going to go ahead and use this color now. Uh, so I think I'm going to go ahead and use it down here on this nose, and I am not going to paint in the triangles or the circles, I'm just going to paint in the background of it. So again, I'm turning my book and I'm gonna do this one right here. This is gonna be my darker purple. So if you had a dark purple, give your hand, give your, give a try at mixing a lighter purple um, on your own. See what you come up with. And Another tip, make sure you mix up enough of the color that you plan to use. That's the worst when you mix up a color and you run out of it and then you can't match it exactly again. It's very frustrating. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Side of the line a little bit, not the end of the world. I'm going to show you one other tip. Um, that I learned the hard way. See how these little droplets of water on my brush? I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. I'm going to dry those off on a little piece of toilet paper because I've had them actually fall off my brush before onto another part of my painting 
that was uh, dry and then it caused what are called you know water droplet mark and I was not happy so pay attention to how much water you have on your brush if you have water on the handle you may want to dry it off we're working in a bigger area use a bigger brush if you're working in a smaller area, use a smaller brush, or if you want more control, if I have more control with a small brush. over this one little spot again, because I'm being picky. Go ahead and my book. And I already know what color I'm going to do next, because as I was looking the last time, um, I noticed that there was a lot of yellow-orange or okra color. Ochre, not okra. <laughs> Ochre color. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. So again, you know, here we go with color theory again. Let's think about how do we make that. We're going to be starting with our yellow because it's the weaker color. And we're going to be adding a little bit of orange, maybe even a touch of brown, um, depending on how accurate I feel the color looks. So cleaning my brushes. My yellow has actually dried out a little bit since I've been working because it's taken me about 40 minutes so far. Let's see, how many do we have done? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six more to go. So this might be a good place to pause um, and then come back to the painting. So you can pause it here if you need a break and then come back to it. So I'm going to keep going. So to make this color, I am going to use a new spot in my palette. The palette's fun because it has different spots for different colors. So I'm going to turn mine. You could always um, wash your palette out or whatever, but I'm actually going to keep these colors in case I decide to use them again. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. Lots of yellow first. I'm looking at the painting Weeping Woman um, for this one to try and figure out exactly what color orange I want to use. So you could pull Weeping Woman up on your screen. Take a look at it. You can go ahead and add a little bit of orange. I feel like I'm going to need a lot more yellow in this. on my scrap paper and I feel like it still needs a little bit more orange maybe even a touch of brown so I'm gonna try a touch of brown because I already know my brown is a warm base color in this palette because I can definitely see that it has red and orange undertones so I'm gonna try just adding a little bit of brown to this yeah I think that was the right decision Maybe a little bit more yellow. Well, I tend to go through my yellow really quickly in my paint palette because it takes so much of it when you're mixing colors. It's just a much weaker color when it comes to watercolors. That's better. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint my next spot in yellow orange. I think I'm gonna do it right here. So I'm gonna flip my book upside down for this one. We've already talked about why I do that. Ooh, I see some pencil line that I missed when I was cleaning this up before. Before I paint that, I'm going to clean off that eraser mark and those pencil lines I don't want to see. Small brush as I work along the edges of my grid here, my chart. And if you've been following along with me, you really shouldn't end up with too many bleeds in your work. The colors should not be running together if you've followed along. Because I've worked very intentionally, thinking about where should be dry. this water. I don't think there's anything on the page underneath, but hopefully there's not. Because remember, watercolors, um, when water gets on them, it can ruin uh, one of your dried watercolor paintings. So you want to be careful with that. I'm just going to touch up a little area up in this corner. So time to pick some more colors to make. I think we're going to work with that kind of raspberry red, kind of the red violet that I saw happening, and then maybe a darker blue. Um, so let me think about where I'm going to paint this color, kind of that raspberry red. Hmm. I have to be intentional. So I would probably be putting the raspberry red um, color I'm going to make either here or here. But this is wet and this is wet, so I can't put it in either of those spots. So maybe I'll work with my dark blue. And I think I'm going to put maybe my dark blue down here. So and this should be dry because we painted that a while ago. All right, so let's talk about making this dark blue, shall we? All right, so I've got a couple of choices here. When you're trying to take blue and make it darker, this is not on your color wheel, but color theory helps you to understand this. You can take your blue, which is what I'm going to do. We're going to put that in a palette or the top of your lid. And if you've run out of area in your lid, just clean it out. Pause the video, go clean it out, and come back. Okay, so I've got my blue in here. Now, I can either work with my brown or my black. We already know that the brown is a little bit warmer and the black is a cooler color. So what I'm gonna do is as I'm looking at these blues in Picasso's paintings, the dark blue specifically that I see in the uh, portrait of Dora Mar, um, I'm gonna probably start with brown, then I can always add black to it if I feel like it's too warm. So I'm cleaning out my brush, and I'm gonna start with my tiny brush because that helps limit how much brown I put in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in. You can see that it instantly darkens it up. And again, you can use just a little scrap paper. I mean, these are literally very small scraps of paper I'm working with. Okay, so I feel like that's on the right track. I'm gonna add a little bit more brown and then maybe a little bit of black. But again, work very slowly. You can always add more colors as needed. Okay, let's add a touch of black to this, just a very small amount. It's not a 
whole lot of difference between those yet. I think that'll work. I think it's good enough. Alright, you don't have to be perfect. And I think I said I was going to put it down here. Oh no, I got a spot of blue. So I'm going to, I see I got a little thing of blue here. Dab straight down and lift up. But it's going to remain there. I'm going to leave it for there because if I do anything else to it, it's just going to mess it up. So, not the end of the world. Mistakes happen. Alright, let's go ahead and... I think I said I was going to paint here or here, kind of that raspberry color. This looks like it's still probably wet, so I'm going to go ahead and do my dark blue here, I think. I'm turning my book. And this time, I'm just going to make up a line right here the curve of the ear so that I'm not gonna um I don't know maybe I guess I don't know I can't decide so right now I'm gonna leave this like this okay and then if I change my mind you'll see Okay, so I think we're ready to go ahead and mix up our raspberry kind of color um, that we see happening in, let's see if I can get it, in the uh, woman in beret and checker dress painting. We see kind of a raspberry color on the beret. Also makes me think of a Prince song, Raspberry Beret. Um, so let's go ahead and mix that up. And then I think I'm going to paint it um, right here, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start with my purple or violet, get that all set, and actually I'm going to start with my red because it's not as dark. So we're going to start with our less powerful, as I like to call it, um, start with the red. <clears throat> and then we'll slowly add in the purple. Now this purple isn't as dark as a lot of the purples that come in pink palettes. So if you have a really dark purple or violet, you're going to use probably a little bit less. Um, but this one's pretty light. Ooh yeah, look at that beautiful raspberry color that we're getting. I'm going to add a touch more. Okay. <clears throat> I think I am ready to go ahead and paint this in. Um, you know what? Gosh, I think I'll paint it. Oh, choices are so difficult sometimes. Hmm, so many spots I could put it. Where do I want to put this one? I think I'm gonna put it... I think I'm gonna put it up. Uh, we'll see. <coughs> so I'm gonna turn my book. And I'm going to go ahead and start painting this in. <clears throat> All right, let's figure out which color we're going to do next. So I'm going to take a look at those slides again 
and determine, oh, that's right. I wanted to do kind of, um, kind of a blue green. So I see a little bit of blue green happening in some of these paintings. So again, at this point, you should know how to make that, but we'll review it. We have blue and green, which make blue green. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in my palette. So um, I'm gonna turn this this way, so that you can see me mix it. Okay, and where am I gonna put this blue green? I definitely don't wanna put it here. That would be so much blue. All right, I think we'll do the blue green down here probably. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my blue. Remember, if your water gets really dirty, to change it. And I will be adding a little bit of green at a time. That was way more green than I meant. Oh, so much for a little bit. Okay, so that means I'm going to add a lot more blue to this. I guess I should have had that coffee. My goodness, I went out of my lines a little bit. Using more green that I'm into. Okay, so the blue green I'm seeing is in again, um, actually, um, in a few of these. So depending on which blue green you're looking at, you may want to add more blue um, to yours or a bit more green depending on the values of your blues and your greens. Ah, oh, that's so much better. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and paint this in... Where did I say it? Did I say I was going to put it here? Hmm. I think, yeah, we'll put, I, I think, I think we'll put it there. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why not? <clears throat> I love this color. Feels very much like the ocean to me. Um, remember, I haven't done this much in this video just because I'm working in a small space as I'm videoing this, that you could lift your book up and flip it over so that when you get to the edges you don't have to lift your book page up like I've been doing. I'm doing that because I'm working with not a ton of room um, as I'm recording this video. But you might want to flip your book open so you don't have to hold this like this. And then I'm going to be switching to my smaller brush. Turn my book just so that I have an easier angle for some of this than my hand. Okay, two more spots to go. So let's see if we can identify two more colors that we see being used in Picasso's paintings that we haven't used here. Now, you could go with a neutrals, you could go with a brown or a black, but let's see if we can challenge ourselves to come up with another color that we see being used in at least one of his paintings that have been shared with you. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see what I can come up with. Okay, so as I've been looking through the paintings and trying to identify another color, I've seen some variations of green, kind of like a pistachio green, teal green, kind of a lime green, um, kind of a grass green, so a lot of different greens to choose from. 
So let's go ahead and see what we can come up with. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just see what the green looks like straight out of my paint palette to see does this remind me of any of the colors I'm seeing. Um, and then, because I don't want it to be identical to this one, right? I want some variation. So I can also try making that pistachio kind of green that I mentioned. So I think for that, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to do your green, my green in my paint palette anyway, depending on what your green looks like, you may do some variations. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and then I'm going to add a touch of brown uh, to, to uh, kind of neutralize it a little bit. Right now, that pretty much looks identical to the yellow green we have over here. So, I'm gonna add a little bit more to this. Add, like I said, I'm gonna try adding just a smidge, teensy weensy bit of brown. Just it, it kind of dirties it up a little bit, but it sometimes helps to make a more interesting color. So let's see, a little bit more brown. There's a lot of red in that brown. So, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try this on the scrap paper. Interesting, kind of a dirty um, pistachio-ish kind of green. And I definitely see some of that happening um, in the painting seated portrait of Dora Mar. The hat, she's got that hat on it. it. Looks like the color in the hat there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And I'm gonna put it here. I want it directly underneath that one. So um, let's see if I can switch to my larger brush to get started. And then, of course, I'll switch to my smaller one. Hmm. Kind of like a Shrek colored green with a Shrek looking ear. done yeah we have one last one to do and I am thinking oh let's see let me see okay so I think I'm gonna try and do almost like a lilac color so somewhere in between the raspberry and this um, somewhere between like a pink and a violet but definitely I'm gonna shoot for a little bit more purple uh, and maybe a little bit lighter so I'm going to go ahead and start with my purple. Actually, I'm going to start with red. Nah, I'm going to start with purple this time. And that's because I want this to look more purple than red. So we'll see what happens. If I don't like the color I mix up, I don't have to use it. Now I'm going to see if I can come up with something different than this by adding a little bit of red at a time. It's going to be so close. I don't want them too close. I'm going to test it on the paper. 
I'm so close. It's not the same. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, oh, this is tough, is add a little bit of water. If you had white watercolors, you, you could add that, but I know most of you don't. So I'm gonna just try doing this with some water. color and you don't like it, you can get rid of it. I'm gonna try adding I'm gonna try adding yellow. Which is a little bit crazy. Because when you take two complementary colors and you mix them together, you generally end up with brown. <laughs> so that's why I said this is a little bit crazy that I'm doing. Let's just Well, that is more on the right track of kind of like that uh, pinkish color that I'm looking for. And I'm going to take okay, blue and brush up with that. I'm going to go ahead and paint this. I'm going to turn this this way. Yeah, it's kind of a blush, a little bit of lavender, a little bit of a hint of lavender in it. If you recall, the way I lightened this up was just by adding a lot of water. And I just experimented with adding a few other, just little bits of other colors into that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, you're gonna do this part on your own is I'm gonna have you go ahead in and go ahead and paint in these different parts. Um, so I think it would be fun to paint these in the rest of the way. So you can go ahead and use these colors that we've already identified, um, plus neutrals, which would be brown, black, and white, to fill in the details of the paintings the rest of the way. Okay, so have fun. Uh, when your work is done, you're gonna be posting that for me to look over because we have a really fun, I think, project that we're gonna be using this chart to help us with, which is we're gonna be making a sculpture. Um, I know it sounds crazy. We're gonna be making a sculpture inspired by these paintings, using these colors, using these facial features, and we're just gonna have a lot of fun with it. So it's gonna be important that you have this to help you through that process. So go ahead and finish up this painting using these colors, repeating them, so basically any color you see in the chart, you can use again, plus your neutrals, brown, black, white, um, any of those are fine. And then I look forward to seeing what it looks like when it's done.